In the previous video, we discussed the four terminal structure, which is often used in hybrid multi-junction devices. In this video, we will look at the first of a number of hybrid configurations, namely the perovskite crystalline silicon hybrid tandem. This hybrid tandem is researched both as a two-terminal and a four-terminal configuration. In this video, we will discuss the motivation for combining crystalline silicon technology with the fast developing perovskites technology. You will also learn about the state of the art two terminal and four terminal device configurations. We will start with a quick recap of the state of the art crystalline silicon technology. Cell efficiencies up to 26.7% have already been reported for monocrystalline silicon cells. The maximum theoretical achievable efficiency for a single junction crystalline silicon cell is 29.4%. It is evident that we are nearing the maximum practical efficiency for these solar cells. It is therefore no wonder that the PV industry is looking for ways to further improve the efficiency of this very mature technology. The logical next step is therefore using crystalline silicon in a multi-junction configuration. But to what extent can we increase the efficiency by creating a multi-junction device? The optimal band cap of a bottom cell in a tandem configuration ranges from approxima approximately 0.9 electron volt up to 1.2 electron volt, depending on the design considerations. Silicon with a band gap of 1.12 electron volts is therefore a suitable bottom cell. The top cell in a tandem configuration should have a higher band gap in the range of 1.5 electron volt up to 1.8 electron volt. The exact band gap energy depends again on the design and on the bottom cell material. The ideal combination has a shock requires upper limit of approximately 45%. However, more practical limits suggest a maximum achievable efficiency of 35 to 39 percent for a tandem device. In case crystalline silicon is used as a bottom cell in a tandem device, the optimal band gap of the top cell is approximately 1.7 electron volt. The efficiency limit for such a device is about 43 percent. In the case of a four terminal device, the optimal band gap of the top cell is slightly higher. However, the four terminal structure is less sensitive to band gap variations than the two terminal design. So, for a four terminal device with a crystalline silicon bottom cell, the efficiency limit will remain 43% or larger for a top cell band gap energy ranging from 1.65 electron volt up to 1.9 electron volt. Let's look at the band gap of the perovskite solar cells. Here we see the general cubic crystal structure of a perovskite. One of the most common perovskites is the metal ammonium lead triode, where the cation A is the metal ammonium ion, cation B is the lead ion, and anion X is the iodide ion. This perovskite has a reported band gap in the range of 1.5 to 1.7 electron However, when the iodide is replaced with bromide, the band gap can reach values up to 2.3 electron volt. A mixed composition of iodide and bromide can result in a band gap between 1.5 and 2.3 electron volt. Perovskite can therefore have a band gap that is within the optimal band gap range for a top cell. There are also other materials with suitable top cell band gaps, such as the 3-5 materials, which we will discuss later in this section. Perovskite can be particularly interesting due to its low cost, high throughput fabrication potential. Furthermore, the efficiency of the material has increased tremendously from only 3.8% up to over 20% in a relatively short time. However, if the stability issues can be overcome, a perovskite and crystalline silicon hybrid device could be very promising. Now let's look at the state of the art devices. We will start with a two terminal hybrid. This device has a modified silicon heterojunction bottom cell. This cell works well in a tandem configuration since the parasitic absorption of high energy photons in the amorphous silicon passivation layer is no longer an issue. 
This is because the high energetic photons are already absorbed by the perovskite's top cell. The heterojunction has an efficiency of 21.4% as a single junction. For use in a tandem configuration, the front contact and anti-reflection coating are replaced by a thin ITO layer. Furthermore, the front surface is polished in order to grow the semi-transparent perovskite cell on top by means of a spin coating process. The rear surface is textured to optimize the scattering of infrared light. Finally, the thickness of the amorphous silicon passivation layer is slightly increased for better passivation and carrier collection. These modifications reduce the efficiency of this cell as a single junction to 10%. This illustrates how sensitive the device performance is to these design features. The basis for the perovskite stop cell is an opaque perovskite cell with a band gap of 1.63 electron volt, which is slightly below the optical range and an efficiency of 15.7% is reached. This cell also requires some modification since it's important that the cell is transparent for light below the perovskite's band gap. The semi-transparent adapted version that is suitable for the tandem device has a lower standalone efficiency of 14.5%. The two terminal tandem configuration resulting from these two cells has a record efficiency of 23.6% up to date. In theory, Based on the current state-of-the-art crystalline silicon and perovskite technology, such a hybrid device could achieve a 29.2 maximum efficiency. Since the actual record efficiency is much lower, a lot of improvement is still possible for this tandem configuration. The four-terminal mechanically stacked tandem cell outperforms the two-terminal device with a reported record efficiency of 26.4%. The top cell of this device is based on a quadruplication perovskite cell with a higher band gap of 1.73 electron volt, which is within the optimal range and an efficiency of 17.4%. Nevertheless, this opaque cell is similarly adapted for use in a tandem device. The resulting semi-transparent top cell has an efficiency of 16%. As bottom cell, an IBC crystalline silicon cell was used with an efficiency of 23.9%. This cell has not been adapted for use in the four terminal tandem yet. The only addition was a silicon gel on the top of the IBC cell to improve the optical coupling between the top and bottom cell. The Prosky top cell was then stacked on top, which reduces the bottom cell efficiency to 10.4%. This results in a record device efficiency of 26.4%. The maximum possible efficiency for this device based on the current state-of-the-art technology is 30.2%, which also leaves some room for improvement. In summary, we discussed the desire to combine the mature crystalline silicon PV technology with a high band gap material to create highly efficient multi-junction devices. A crystalline silicon perovskite hybrid seems promising since both are low-cost technology and the band gap of perovskite can be engineered so that it makes an optimal combination with the crystalline silicon. We discussed a record two-terminal tandem structure and a four-terminal mechanically stacked device and we looked into the design consideration for these tandem devices. In the next video we will discuss the crystalline silicon 3-5 hybrid devices.